sea bass, roast duck and party trifle from Nigel Slater's Simple Christmas at 11.15. After a festive feast from BBC One and don't fret, it's not Christmas Day just yet. Far more. Beetroot, uh, all cooked in like a papillot, so it's got loads and loads of flavour in it. Cheltenham beetroot. There you go, you heard it here first. There you go, so two fantastic festive dishes to look forward to. We've got our Christmas feel to our BBC Archive Films too. Uh, today we've got helpings from Rick Stein, Nigel Slater and of course those two fat ladies. Now our special guest today has starred in some of the biggest BBC dramas of recent years, including Survivors and Bone Kickers. This Christmas she's hitting our screens in the brand new comedy drama for the BBC called Lapland. Please welcome Saturday Kitchen. It's Julie Graham. Great to have her on the show, Hi, Julie. Nice to meet you. Now, a big foodie? Yes, huge foodie. In fact, I spent the summer eating at Nathan's restaurant. Oh, did you? Because I was filming Doc Martin. Right. And um, so we were staying there and I ate in that restaurant. Did lot. you know that? I no, I didn't know that. that. You liked it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the oh, pressure's good. on then. So thank pressure's, you. So right. Pressure's on then. But you were brought up in Scotland, a big sort of... Yes, Glasgow. Yeah, but literally, I, when I was up in Glasgow, I learned a new Glasgow salad, a bowl of chips. <laughs> it's what they have up there. But that area, literally on the East Coast, is so famous for seafood, isn't it? Very good. You yeah. know, it's just some of the oh, most amazing seafood. Yeah. And obviously great ladder of great ingredients. Mm. But now, of course, you're in... Well, you're living in Brighton now, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Not so much fish on the coastline so down much, there, but, but there's a little, a little bit. Yeah. There's a little bit, there you go. But of course, at the end of this programme, I've got to cook you your food heaven yes. and food hell. That's what you're here for, okay. to face that. Uh, so it's either something based on your favourite ingredient, food heaven, or your nightmare ingredient, food hell. Okay. So food heaven, would it be sort oh of... Oh, God, this is everything, but... What would it be? Because you've travelled all over the place, haven't I you? Have. Really? I have. I mean, my, I, I love... I mean, I just love garlic and chilli and pasta and all that sort of stuff, but my absolute food to heaven are tomatoes. Tomatoes? Yeah, tomatoes. Yeah? I will use tomatoes in everything. That's Absolutely everything. Tomatoes for breakfast, tomatoes for lunch, right. tomatoes for dinner. Well, there's so many different varieties now as well to choose oh, from. That's what yeah. got me in. I think that's what got me into cooking as well. My granddad's mm. allotment at the bottom of the garden. Yeah. So tomatoes, food heaven. What about food hell? Oh, that's easy. Blue cheese. Blue cheese? <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't even call it blue cheese. It's just mouldy cheese. <laughs> there's lots of it around this I mean, time I of year, I, isn't it? Would you, would you go into your bread bin and eat a big mouldy loaf, would you? No. But why do you do it with cheese? I mean, what about anyway, It's either tomatoes or the tomato. <laughs> Leave no. those boys arguing. So no. The tomatoes <laughs> are still <laughs> for Julie. Uh, for food heaven, I've got something simple but sensational. Okay. An authentic margarita pizza. <gasps> See, proper oh, pizza. Yes. I've been to Naples and seen how it's done. Love it. First, I'm going to use a dough using semolina and double zero flour. Cover it with a traditional mix of San Marzano tomatoes, which mm. are lovely and sweet, less than seeds. Covered with mozzarella and basil and baked on a very, very hot pizza stove. Delicious, Heaven. but simple. Or oh, Julie could be facing food hell. That Stilton, the cheese is rolled in breadcrumbs and quickly deep fried, <laughs> and it's served with an endive and baby little gem salad, fresh figs, and a bacon dressed in a creamy blue cheese dressing as well to go with it. So blue cheese all round. Oh no, no please. Uh, well, trust me, if I have my way, it's going to be pizzas. But uh, yes. Yes. Because we're not live today, there's no vote. Yes. So instead, <laughs> I've got a Christmas surprise, and we're going to let fate decide what Julie will be eating at the end of the show. Oh. You've got to keep watching to find Great out how. Let's meet Great our other chef table guests. As usual, there are two Saturday Kitchen viewers. Maggie, you want another wrote in. Who have you brought along with you? My sister Anne. Now, another from another sort of famous place surrounded by water and a big foodie capital, Jersey. Indeed. You lived there all your life? Yes. Big foodies? Yes. Yes. I'll talk about a little bit more later. If you've got any questions on the food mm. subject, don't hesitate. Fire away throughout the show. Um, right, let's get cooking. It's your local then, I presume, where you've yes. been for the, quite a few times. And what better way to start with a some simply stunning British seafood from this man, the fabulous Mr. Nathan Outlaw. Great to have on the show. Thank you for coming. So on. what are we cooking? Right, we're doing a lovely beetroot cooled salmon, which is to be done in advance. So yep. Done, yeah, Christmas, we don't want to be doing anything. Mac, smoked mackerel pate, and then we're doing a nice beetroot salad, 
Uh, and then we're going to do some deep fried oysters. And the reason why I do deep fried oysters, I think it's more accessible for everybody to eat than to try and. Well, everybody sure. like people don't like the thought of oysters because nah. of the texture. But if you yeah. deep fry them, it's something slightly different. So I know you want to get on and do the beetroot. You want me to yep. do the uh, the smoked mackerel pate, really you can, yep. which is over here. So this is like a little smorgasbord of uh, of different seafood. Then yeah, smoked fish. Yeah, I mean, I think what's nice about this is that you don't want to be rushing about at Christmas, you know, doing all the um, yeah, all the different sort of. In the kitchen, you want to have everything done. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. Yeah, and because uh, everyone seems to be stressed out, don't they, at Christmas sometimes? So, don't know uh, what you mean? Well, <laughs> if everybody comes around. This is just a, the perfect sort of thing to have in your fridge as a backup. If someone pops around, you've got it there, and all of a sudden you've, uh, you know, you've got a meal in front of them, and they can. Uh, yeah, you, know, you, you can enjoy the time with well, them. Well, preparation is the key, I think, more than anything else, isn't it, really? Yeah, but definitely, yeah. And then just making it a little bit different, and obviously a celebration, you know, in its entirety. The dish has obviously the deep fried oysters, which are something that you may not have tried before because you're not too sure. So yeah. this will just make them a little bit more, um, let's say, you know, I hate to say it, but almost like that nugget sort of fried sort of thing, which... Uh, Nugget? Yeah, that sort of, you know, people will eat it and it's like it's covered in... It's amazing what people eat when it's covered in... I build in you up into this two-star <laughs> Michelin <laughs> chef. <laughs> and there you are with your nuggets. So, yeah. right, what am I putting in here with the mackerel? Right, so in the mackerel pate, you've got a little bit of cream cheese, uh, yoghurt, and then we've got some horseradish, and I don't think you like it. Basically. We'll admit the horseradish out of this, won't we? So, in the marinade, we've got the raw beetroot, yep. some sugar, a lot of salt. You are curing the whole side. Yeah. And then we've got some um, fennel seeds, which go very well with seafood. And then we've got a bit of tarragon, which gives it that sort of, um, sort of anise flavour, which is very, very nice. All that goes in there. Tarragon right, and so. fish are a great combination, aren't they, really? Especially with oily fish. I think, you know, some of the whiter fish may not be able to handle it, but I think we've... Um, <laughs> never used me There we go. That's it. <laughs> got them again. <laughs> Lovely. I just blend all them ingredients up. Oh. <laughs> big I give up. Give me well. Do it by hand. Do it by hand. <laughs> Wouldn't smoked salmon be easier? Much easier. Yeah, all right. All right. All right. So blend that up. Yeah. There you go. All right. So what we got in here is all the um, the cure basically. Yeah. And what you want is a balance between the sweet. And the sour. There you go. Do you want this again? No. No. Now we do is we'll put that into our, into our tray. Like so. And also there's a lot of water inside the, the salmon that should be drawn out by the salt. So this is kind of like uh, making your own gravel axe, would that be right? Or? Yeah, yeah, it is. And what you need to do is. Uh, yeah, remember, it's quite a thick bit of fish, a bit of salmon, so it will take a bit of time. It'll take 30 hours in total. Right. Um, but you've got to turn it over halfway. So after 10 hours, start it off on the, um, on the skin first. Get a bit dirty with this bit. And rub it over the fish. That goes into the fridge. So then you turn that after what? After, after 10 hours. Yeah. You'll turn that over and then give it another 20 hours. And what yep. you end up with is something that looks like this in here. Well, it goes really, really dark then when you Yeah, really the dark. So all that, all that, um, the water, the natural water that's in the salmon, it will come, will come out. Yeah. Um, and we'll leave you with this. And then what you need to do is wash it off the best you can. So you scrape off all that cure, like so. Okay. Now we're going to know why you wore this. You see? Yeah, so then we get a little white one, you wouldn't get it everywhere. And then we just need to wash that off. It's just plain water you're doing over there. Yeah, it's just plain water. Right, well, will you wash that? Uh, don't forget you can find Nathan's recipe along with all the other studio recipes from today's show on our website. Go to bbc.co.uk forward slash Saturday Kitchen. Right, for the salad, you want more beetroot, do you as well? You want? Yeah. I've got a little bit of shallot and some garlic there. This beetroot just basically finely diced, I take it, or just diced? That's right, yep, just diced up. Go. Doesn't really matter, just uh, whatever you're comfortable so with. So once you wash the salt off, how long will that keep? Uh, once you've washed it off, this will last for a good week, maybe even two weeks in the fridge. It's just like, you know, the curing process before you do smoke salmon. Yeah. Um, but it's actually a good thing to um, freeze as well. So, you know, if you, you do buy a whole side of salmon, um, then you actually can um, keep it for a long time. So you've got it there, all dried off. 
and that's ready to slice and use. What we're going to do is we're going to take these oysters off, yeah. open them up. And the most important <laughs> thing about when you're doing oysters, obviously, just this is the safety element. Get somebody else yeah. to do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you make sure you've got it. Awesome. <laughs> the best thing to do is to uh, hold the uh, oyster very firmly you know, against the board, <laughs> and then don't use too much pressure. It'll naturally, you're, there's a little hinge there, and you'll hear it. It almost pops. You can hear that. And then what you do is, the safest way to do it is hold, get your finger underneath there, and then come along the, the roof of the oyster. And at the side, you've got a little hinge. And as soon as that hinge is released, you open up the oyster. And then what we're trying to do is get the oysters out. And all the juice. If In this recipe, we're not using the juice, but the juice is a very good to make a mayonnaise with. Right. As a base, which I do like. There you go. So flour, egg, Oop, including the shell. Yeah. And breadcrumbs. There you go. That's right. And you use these little dried breadcrumbs as well, there. Yeah. So straight in. Yeah. Now you need to dry these off because otherwise you'll end up with um, a soggy crumb. Right. You want me to flour, egg, and breadcrumbs? If you go flour, I'll go egg, and then that's it. So, just so what's the, the order? Flour? Flour, then that egg, egg. and then the, uh, and then brew through the breadcrumbs, yeah. It's like for nuggets. Yeah, for <laughs> nuggets. That's you make a nugget. <laughs> you nugget. <laughs> right, flour, egg. But it's how you do scampi and all that, that how you get the kids to eat them? That is, yeah, my, well, my children will eat them. That's how I got them into oysters. Yeah. Yep. So, the oysters go in. One minute? Yeah, not, yeah. No more just than until that. they're crispy, because you obviously yeah. you want to keep them as rare as possible. So, yeah, what we do is take the end off. Salt these. If we can bring that over here, I can bring it over there. Put these there on. Right, so this lovely. The texture changes from the uh, the salt and the sugar, yeah. That's right, yeah. So yeah. you've got a lovely sort of decaf of salmon. Like that. And I think if you if you cut it too thin, you actually don't get the texture of it. Yeah, you know, and it's almost there's nothing to eat there. So cut it a bit thin, thicker. There you go. Do you want a little slice? There you go. That's the little. That's it. Good. There you go. So you've got your. And then I'll leave you to put a, yep. a chefy little pile. Did you season them, chef? Yes, the disc. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're done. Just making sure. All right, then we've got our uh, deep fried oysters. The plate. Next two. And there you have it. So you've got beetroot cured salmon, smoked mackerel uh, pate, deep fried oysters, and then a nice beetroot salad. And if you're doing that this Christmas, I'm definitely coming round. It looks spectacular, I have to say. But there you go. You get to dive into this. Your first dish. Julie, dive into that. I don't have to You probably eat this already at this place, isn't it? Because I know that's on the menu, isn't it? Yeah. Can I first? Yep. Yeah. Can I just dig in with my fingers? Yeah, dive in. There's knife and fox in there for your. I think what's nice about it is the different textures. Well. Yeah, you're the hot and cold as well, yeah. And, yeah, and I think it's interesting, but simple. Yeah. And you'd, you'd serve that, you know, all together in your restaurant like that? Yep, so like good. that together, all individually, but I like it on a big platter for like, sort mm. of, you know, and you've got 10, 15 people coming around, yeah. perfect. Mm. Mm. Those oysters are... Mm. Mm. I don't mm. think the girls are going to get any. <laughs> <there you> go. <laughs> <laughs> the idea is you pass it down. Right, there yeah, you go. Yeah. So not just right as usual, we need some wines to go with this. We sent oh. our wine expert, Susie Atkins, to Dorset to spread the Christmas cheer. So what did she choose to go with Nathan's stunning salmon? I'm near Dorchester at Trinity Street Christmas Tree Farm. No time to choose a tree, though. I'm off to find the wines for the Christmas show. Nathan, I have made your sensational seasonal salmon, and I can tell you that it only really goes with wines that have a fresh, crisp bite. And since it's Christmas, you could splash out, perhaps, on a dry English sparkling wine, something like this glorious Ridgeview from Sussex. But if you're feeding a crowd this Christmas, then I suggest stocking up on a refreshing still white. And the wine I've chosen is the Zaltse Buschwein Chenin Blanc 2011, and that's from South Africa. 
Raw beetroot, horseradish and smoked mackerel aren't the easiest ingredients to match with wine, but I've found that whites with an apple-y flavour are absolute Christmas crackers here. And the Chenin Blanc grape gives us all the apple that we need. There it is on the nose, as well as some pear. This is really a fruity wine. Although this is a new world wine, it's not remotely oaky or heavy, and I need that lighter touch in order to pick up on all the fish in the dish. It's got a really fruity streak, bags of orchard fruit, and that's what's going to work with that wonderful beetroot, the sweetness in the cure, and the peppery hint in the pate. Nathan, I love cured salmon at this time of year, and with the mackerel pate, the oysters, and a glass of this vivacious white, we've got a festive feast. Enjoy. We're definitely enjoying this because it's dramatically going down. It's definitely